SpaceX is not only actively preparing for the fourth Starship launch with Ship 29 and Booster 11, but they are also testing other prototypes to optimize time and increase launch frequency in the near future. However, things do not always go smoothly. Recently, SpaceX encountered trouble during a test with Starship Prototype 31. So what issue did Ship 31 face? What did the Starbase director have to say about this? Is it a serious problem that could impact the entire Starship production system? Let's find out on today's episode of Alpha Tech. On May 12th, SpaceX conducted the first cryogenic proof test on Ship 31 since it was fully stacked on October 3rd, 2023. This test aimed to verify the structural integrity of the prototype at extremely low temperatures. However, Ship 31 did not have a smooth start. During the middle of the test, as gaseous nitrogen was being filled into the CH4 tank, an incident occurred. A bright fire emerged clearly within the thick fog for about 15 seconds. Although SpaceX did not publicly disclose the cause of the incident, many speculate it was an electrical issue with the ship. This theory is further supported by close-up photos of the aftermath of the small fire. The electrical wiring appears to be severed and exposed along the body of the ship. It's unclear when SpaceX will test Ship 31 again, but it seems repairs were already underway as the ship was rolled back to the high bay the very next day. Honestly, encountering issues during the testing of prototype is unavoidable. I even feel fortunate that SpaceX discovered this problem. Now they know and can fix it before a real disaster happens. The incident is also why Ship 29 had to suddenly leave the OLM area on May 14th. Kathy Luter confirmed this in her latest interview May 15th. We were testing our next round of, of vehicles, next round of Starships, and um, we had a test anomaly that we're assessing right now and understanding what does that mean. SpaceX has identified the issue. After conducting three Starship flights and dozens of prototype tests, they seem to have accumulated enough experience to handle any problems that arise with their Starship operations. The general manager of Starbase also confirmed that the company is currently focusing all efforts on new prototypes and upcoming flights. Therefore, even a minor issue prompts them to reevaluate all their spacecraft. Ship 29 is one such example. It disappeared for a short time before getting stacked onto Booster 11. We're kind of holding off on our wet dress because one of the things you do, you know, we're always working on vehicles, but when there's a problem on a vehicle that's in the blow, you want to make sure that you can separate the cause of that problem from your flight vehicle. Kathy Luter also provided an answer regarding whether similar issues might appear in other prototypes. And so what the teams are doing right now is really going and saying, is it the same design exactly? Is there some other reason for us to have separation to make sure that we're not going into a flight test with there being an issue? I think right now they're working through that and we'll probably have the vehicle cleared. Well, we might worry about Ship 29, Ship 30, Ship 31, and Ship 32, but nothing will go wrong as long as SpaceX teams stay vigilant and work promptly. As long as SpaceX maintains its testing ships, the final product will surely be safe and reliable. Ship 31 is likely to fly with Booster 13 on the sixth Starship flight. This flight is highly anticipated because it might be the first time SpaceX attempts to catch both the Starship and the Super Heavy using Mechazella. Hopefully, after some time being repaired in the high bay, it'll appear before us with a magnificent look, ready for an incredible journey. As for Ship 29, after the incident with Ship 31, it had a rather tumultuous journey before it could sit atop Booster 11. When Booster 11 and Ship 29 met at the OLM orbital launch mount area on May 13th, they weren't immediately combined. It became more challenging when, on May 14th, Ship 29 was suddenly moved out of the OLM to a position near the rest of the B test stand. Indeed, when this happens, most of us were worried that the ship might have an issue that would stop further activities. But fortunately, after all, on May 16th, SpaceX completed the stacking of Ship 29 and Booster 11, preparing for a crucial test before the rocket can launch. The process was swift, taking only an hour for Starship to assemble fully. Although there was a slight misalignment issue when aligning the ship with the top of the Super Heavy, it didn't detract from the impressive short assembly time. That's pretty cool, right? The development at SpaceX continues to overwhelm us with what's going on at Starbase. Everything is happening so quickly. It's so fast that even our daily videos can't keep up with the pace. But don't worry too much because our team always strives to bring you the latest and most accurate info. If you enjoy our content, please give us a like and subscribe. That motivates us to work even harder in the future. Now, 
back to the latest SpaceX activities. As we look forward to the upcoming Starship launches, we can't overlook the new Starship V2 prototypes that are about to be made at Starbase. The latest images we've received show the forward flap of Starship V2, indicating that SpaceX is beginning to manufacture and assemble V2 components right now. Earlier in April, two ring selections believed to be part of the V2 were spotted, showing some notable changes. Earlier this month, another ring, possibly for V2, was also delivered to Starbase and moved to Mega Bay 2. So when will it be produced? The start of V2 production appears to be very close, with preparations already underway and key components arriving at Starbase. Production of V2 could begin as early as next month or later, as SpaceX might allocate more time and resources to the Starship launch next month. Unfortunately, we can predict that V2 production might be completed by September or October. Currently, it takes SpaceX about one to one and a half months to fully assemble a Starship V1 prototype, if all segments are available. Therefore, for Starship V2, which has an increased height compared to the original, it might take even more time. Hopefully, that's the case. If everything goes smoothly in the coming weeks, other parts of Starship will gradually arrive at Starbase. When do you think V2 will get completed? Please leave a number showing your prediction below in the comments. But don't forget that SpaceX's production speed is limited by a massive factory that's gradually being completed. Indeed, the reason why Starship components are getting delivered to Starbase is a trickle that could be that SpaceX is manufacturing parts of a Starship at a remote production facility. The agility and continuous flow will undoubtedly arrive here in the coming months as SpaceX's giant rocket production factory comes into operation. All of this is to get us ready to be able to start meeting the production and launch rate that we need to be able to accomplish our missions, Kathy Luter said in her latest update. This will be the largest rocket factory in the world. We're in the process of building a 1 million square foot factory. And not only the Star Factory, but also many other components are being expanded by SpaceX for future development. Launch pad is one of those important things. We're actually extending it up with a pad and everything else. SpaceX is building a second launch pad at Starbase. This new infrastructure will replace the two previous sites, suborbital pad A and pad B. It will still have components similar to SpaceX's first launch tower. However, changes are inevitable because we have the much larger version 2 and possibly even version 3 behemoths. Additionally, two new pads might also appear on the Florida coast. Since the end of 2023 and beginning of 2024, we've heard quite a bit of news from government agencies regarding SpaceX's proposal to build a new Starship launch pad in Florida. If you want to learn more about this topic, check out these videos of ours. That's all for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.